Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are going to crash course in Quixel Mixer by making potholes. Mixer is so intuitive that it lets you be creative rather than technical. After just a few hours of use you will feel like a pro. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we're talking about how to create potholes with inside Quixel Mixer. Now, if you've never used Quixel Mixer before, it is a really, really incredible, intuitive program that enables you to mix textures together. Uh, in particular, um, it works with mega scans. So mega scans, um, again, also if you don't know it, uh, check it out. Um, it's an incredibly robust library of uh, real world assets that are scanned and they're highly, highly accurate and highly detailed. Um, and basically this is just a way to mix them all together and it's incredibly intuitive. And when I found out about it and started playing with it, I just couldn't stop. Um, so this lesson is gonna be uh, on the basic side and because this is such an intuitive program, I'm not gonna go over the details too much because I don't feel like you need them. That's how intuitive it is. Um, so we're gonna be working backwards to try to get somewhere in this world. Uh, this might be a little bit more beat up than uh, maybe some potholes, but uh, in any case, we're gonna be kind of working backwards to get to this. All right, so uh, let's start with a fresh project. Okay, so when you first open up the program, what you're gonna find is it's gonna give you a splash screen right here. Um, and basically this is where all your projects and scene files are kept. So let's go ahead and let's add a new project. Let's call this Potholes. Okay, um, and inside the potholes, it wants a new mix, right? A new scene. So let's add a new mix and let's call this potholes 01. Okay, we'll leave the working resolution for 4096 right now. Let's click, uh, click OK. Now when you first load it up, what it gives you is it gives you essentially nothing, right? Um, so how does this work? So what it does is basically you have to tell it what, what you want in there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually give it a base layer, all right? And so in our case, a base layer is gonna be asphalt. So asphalt is what we need. Um, so what you can do is you can come over here and you can go to online. Now, if, you, if you've never used this before, if you've never used Quixel, you can just come over here and search for asphalt and you should get something for free, right? You should get some sort of uh, one for free. Now, I have mine set that I'm an Unreal user. Um, so these are all open to me right now. And what I've done is I've actually downloaded some of these, but let's say that you haven't. So what you do is you just click on it um, and then you say download. Okay, it's gonna download it. And then when it's done downloading, it'll be in your local library over here. So I've already downloaded some of these and the one that I wanna use today is called Fine American Roads. So once you've downloaded it, go to your local library and click on your base texture, right? So it's gonna load it up. And when it loads it up, um, you're gonna see that, you know, it gives you, gives you some options. And you can think of these options like Photoshop again. This is essentially your PBR. It's everything that's making up your PBR. So you can just come in here and toggle it. You can turn off uh, your normals. You can turn off your displacement, etc. Basically, it's, it's everything that builds it and you can uh, fully control it. Um, so this is cool, but we want to beat this up. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to add uh, another layer. We need to keep building on this, right? It's the mixer. We want to mix things together. So once again, um, I've already kind of tested this out and uh, pre-selected some ones I know work well. So I'm going to go back over to my local library um, and I'm going to select concrete and old concrete was working pretty well for me. Now when you bring in old concrete, you're gonna see that instantly it kind of displaces it a little bit, but not much happens. And that's, uh, that's because essentially they're on the same plane and you need to tell it, um, yeah, what to do. So this is what it actually looks like. So what we wanna do is we wanna blend this in here. So let's go over here and let's tell it what the height is. So let's go to our height and instantly you'll see it, it kind of starts coming through, right? But these don't really look like potholes. There's like way too many of them and it's just not very good. Um, so what we need to do is we need to come over and we need to go and let's go to our placements and let's tell it just to be smaller. Let's just tell it not to repeat at all. And let's have it be one by one. Okay, so now that we got one by one, that's cool, but it's it feels like it's coming up rather than pushing down, right? Like it feels like the the concrete is going up and it is going up right now. So what we need to do is we need to tell it to invert. So when we invert, you'll see we start to get divots, but we actually need to just adjust our height a little bit so we can kind of get something that's a little bit more um, in the world of where we want to be. So maybe, yeah, let's start, let's start here. Um, just for the sake of uh, presentation. So we have this, 
And this is already pretty cool, in my opinion, for doing hardly anything. Um, but I think it can be better. So how do we make it better? So first thing I think we can do is we have a bunch of options here. And for me, the fall off on this is a little too soft. So with inside here, um, your fall off is actually called your blend radius. So you'll see if I, if I increase this, it gets softer, softer, softer. If I decrease it, it gets harder, 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 right? So by decreasing it, we get something that is a little bit more rough around the edges or tight around the edges, I guess you can say. Um, and we're starting to get something that looks a little bit more like divots, you know, something that would be like a, a hole in the road. Um, you also have um, uh, another option here for warped underlying. Now, in this case, you're not going to see much of a difference. But basically, if you had if you had something that was really bumpy underneath, uh, you would uh, it would it would conform to that shape. I'll get to that maybe a little later on. Um, so we have that, and then we also have preserved details. So preserved details is basically like how much details are going to stay when it actually overlays on top with this with this top. Uh, with your top layer. Uh, again, for this, I don't think we really need to mess with that. What I do think we need to mess with is actually the, uh, you know, how high and low these are going. So you have even more control besides just the height here. You have the height frequency. So let's come over to the height frequency. And basically what this is, this is your contrast. So if you hit nine, you can kind of come in here and you can see the displacement map and what is happening. Um, so if we switch back to the final view here, um, the low frequency is going to be like your big divots, right? So that's going to make it go down quite a bit. And then the high frequency, if I zoom in here, is going to be like your details. So it's going to give more and more like details to those rocks. So let's just bring this here and then maybe put something like that, right? So we just give it a little bit more detail um, and it is uh, it has a little bit more definition. Um, and also goes down a little lower. So that's really what that does. And then threshold is, yeah, I, I would call threshold kind of like your contrast. It's pulling your contrast curves. And this is affecting everything, right? It's, it's, it's affecting all your, uh, your, your materials um, that go into your PBR. So this is great, but one problem I'm having now is that this looks like dirt almost. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because variety is the spice of life, but I think that if we could have it a little closer to this uh, asphalt color that it would look nicer. So if we go to our uh, albedo and we come in here, um, what we can do is we can, we can come in and we can select uh, any color, right? I can come in here and I can make it green if I want, you know? Um, or I can just sample something. But um, what I want to do is they actually have this pretty cool feature that's called match to underlying. So basically it knows that this is going to be a problem and you might want to do this. So when you do match to underlying, you can just kind of dial it in and what it'll do is it'll, it'll match to what's underneath, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> it just kind of works. That's what I like so much about it. It just kind of works. Um, and uh, yeah, where you're seeing it, you know, brown here still, that's just where they're not, it's not quite so uh touching right it's not quite as touching the uh, uh the asphalt below so it's not going to match to it because it's not touching as much so this is good i think this is a nice base but once again we have a lot of everything right there's a lot of stuff happening so let's pair this down so just like in photoshop you can mask this stuff which is awesome um so let's go to our old concrete and what i want to do is i want to just right click and i want to create a paint mask okay so when you create a paint mask, you're going to get, just like in Photoshop, a mask over here, and then you're going to get a brush set. Now, I'm not going to go through the details of these brush sets. It's pretty standard stuff. But what I am going to do is I'm going to select um, a soft brush, right? Now, we can um, come in here, and we can either paint everything. Uh, we can paint things out, or we can paint things in. Right now, I'm going to paint things out because I think it's just uh, a little bit um, more intuitive because I can actually see what's happening. I think these are pretty nice in here. I think maybe by the uh, by the line, we won't do as much. Let's bring this down to like 15 maybe. All right. And then if you want to paint it back in, then you would just come over and you would adjust your color. So um, one thing I want to do is I actually want to bring down the height because I think we have too much to begin with. So let's let's bring down the height. And when we bring down the height, that's just going to do a lot of the work for us. And I'm actually going to reset this mask here. I'm going to clear it. And then I'm going to start painting again.
Okay, so I've gone through and I've painted out um, some of the areas uh, to make it just so they're a little more uh, concentrated, not just everywhere. Now, so this is great, but what if we wanted to further add detail? Now, with Inside Mega Scans, they do have pre-built um, uh, potholes that you can use. So let's take a look at that. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and instead of clicking a surface layer, let's add a decal layer. Okay, so let's go to our decals. And once again, I've already downloaded some that I thought worked pretty nice. Um, so let's take uh, asphalt, asphalt pothole and let's take this and it's going to load it up. All right, now when it loads it up, um, you're going to see right away already it's doing some pretty awesome stuff. Um, but it's not really in the right spot. So if we want to move it right now, the placement is in, it automatically goes to free form because with these decals, it knows that you're going to uh, probably want to do that. So let's take this and let's maybe rotate it and then scale it down. Maybe move it over here. Um, and then once again, uh, the color in my opinion is, is just wrong. So um, this time actually, just for the sake of uh, showing, let's come over here and let's just select this and apply. And then yeah, maybe kind of mix it in a little bit. All right, so we got that. And then maybe we can just increase it's low frequency a little bit. And this is where map to underlying will come in handy. So if I take this and, oops, it's very sensitive. Okay, so if I take this and I move this to say right over here, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna warp to that texture, right? It's gonna warp to what's underneath it. Whereas if I don't have warp to underlying, it's not gonna do any of that. And honestly, probably not look that good. Um, now blur is something where it just kind of blends between the underlying uh, and the not underlying, right? But versus what it is. So let's just go ahead and warp it completely and then maybe we'll do somewhere like in the middle and then let's bring the uh, high frequency. Now nah, that looks like crap. So let's not bring the high frequency up anymore. Let's just leave it maybe something. Let's just leave it where it was. All right. Um, now I don't actually want to leave it there because I think that it uh, doesn't look very good there. But let's maybe put it over here. And then once again, we can come in here and we could add um, a paint mask, right? And I can just come in here and I can just kind of take down some of these edges because these edges are a little harsh right now. Okay. It's starting to feel kind of natural. I mean, maybe the colors are, are a little off. Um, yeah, let's go here. I think maybe it's better like this, and then we'll select somewhere in here, or just like a dark, let's just do like a blackish type color. What I like too is you can actually see as you go. Yeah. That feels pretty good. All right, we'll say that's good. All right, so that's great. And then I think maybe one other nice thing to do is like, well, let's add just a little bit of cracks to this, right? Let's just add a little bit of cracks and let's have it be just a little bit more beat up because why not? It's fun. Um, so let's go back to our local library and let's see where I put this thing. Let me go under surfaces and then, yeah, I use this one, smooth crack rock. Let's take this and it's gonna add it on top it's going to load it up. All right, so what it's doing right now is right now it's coming in from above, right? Let's actually have it come in from below. So let's invert it and let's take its height and let's let's do something like that. Now you're seeing what we're getting is we're getting this white texture in here which we don't want. So let's just turn the color off. Okay, let's turn the color off and let's put the repetitions. Um, well, the repetitions are already pretty low, so I guess I guess that's as much as we can do for this. That's the one thing I don't like, and they do it because of tiling, so everything can tile perfectly. But the I find that the uh, the um, the intuitiveness of moving stuff is not that great. Um, let's take our low frequency, beef that up a bit. Let's make this our high frequency to add more detail. Okay, obviously a little too much. Let's warp to underlying. And then let's just not have this height be quite so much because I think it's a little, 
too dramatic. And I think what I like, I actually kind of like this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, actually paint this again. Now you can put noise masks on here too, but for some reason I just like painting it. It's just kind of easier. So um, let me put a paint mask again. And I'm just going to paint out some of these because they aren't working for me. So for not being much of a texture, I'm starting to get pretty happy with this. Now I think the last thing that we can do, because it's just fun and it always looks pretty, is let's add a layer of water on top. So one thing that's really awesome with this too is you can just add water very easily. Come up here and go add liquid layer. And once again, it comes in from the top. So what we want to do is we want to tell it to be lower. Okay, so let's have it go lower, lower, lower. And we can just kind of dial it in to however we want, like whatever we think looks natural. To me, this is feeling about natural. You know, you can obviously make it a very rainy day if you want. But for my money, I think that feels pretty decent. And I, I like what's happening here with the edge detail. It's not too uh, soft, which is always kind of difficult uh, to get. Um, all right, so uh, same thing here. You can also just switch the colors if you want. You can go wild. For our sake, we'll just leave it the same. Um, and that is it, my friends. It's so awesome and so fun to play with, and you can just easily, easily drop stuff in. So I hope this was helpful, and I will see you on the next one.